Good afternoon, boys and girls. Today we are going to look at paper 43, May, June, sitting 2015. It's for IGC's math paper. Um, you have two and a half hours to complete this paper. Um, hopefully our video will be much shorter, but you do have more, more time than the actual video material. Okay, let's go back to the question, question one. Um, here we are, we do have a, a grid with some forms on it and we are asked to answer some of the questions. Okay, so the first question is, on the grid, draw the image of triangle T after a reflection in the line X equals negative 1. Okay, so the line X equals negative 1 is this line here. I'm just going to draw it and label it so that you can actually see it. So that is x equals negative 1. Um, so it's the shape T. So this is our mirror. I'm looking at that. So I'm going 1, 2 spaces, 1, 2 spaces. It must look like a little mirror. So I'm seeing the back. And then that's it. Okay, so I'm numbering it this. This is a 1. Okay. Good, so the second question is, triangle T after a rotation of 180 degrees about um, zero, 0, So this triangle is going to turn around. It will stay this space, stay that space. That would be 90 degrees. That would be 180 degrees. So how would it look like? It will shivel around. It would have shivered uh shiveled around and that would be our triangle t after reflection around the point zero zero so i'm just going to write two a two there okay describe the question b describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle t onto triangle u well this is a translation and how many spaces that I translated in the x direction? Negative 1, negative 2. And in the y direction, I moved 1, 2 spaces up. So this is a... I'll just move my thing up and please answer your questions in pen. It is a trans... translation um, of negative 2 2 okay now triangle T now so let's read the B part describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle T onto triangle V triangle T onto triangle V this is definitely an enlargement How, what is the scale factor Oh, we can look at it. This is one, two blocks. That's one, two, three, four, five, six blocks. So it's six divided by two. That gives me a scale factor of three. Now I need to find that center of enlargement. Um, I do that by connecting the, the vertices of my original shape and my um, uh, enlargement. And that gives me this point over there so that point is 0 and 3 so it's an enlargement by a scale factor of 3 around the point 0 3 and that's what I need to write down here around the point 0 and 3 and that would give me three marks. Okay. Good, let's move on to question two. Um, <coughs> question two says, it can't do invest $640 at a rate of 2% per year compound interest. Show that by the end of six years, it can't do has $721 correct to the nearest dollar. Good, so we know it's compound interest. So P equals P01 plus R to the power T. Um, P equals my P0, or my initial principal amount, is 640. 1 plus my rate would be 0 0.02, and I have 6 years. 
Um, so my principal amount, my new principal amount would seven seven twenty seventy four. If I round this up, it would give me seven hundred twenty one. Exactly what I wanted. Okay, Manuela also invests six hundred and forty dollars at a rate at the end of four years. Manuela has seven hundred twenty one. Find the yearly compound interest rate. So it's also compound interest. So P equals P0, 1 plus R to the power T. I do not have the R value. I do have my initial principle and I do have my final principle. So 721 equals 641 plus R. And she invested it for four years. So T would be four. Okay, first step, divide this on, on both sides. <coughs> Sorry, so I get 1.1265 equals 1 plus r to the power 4. Take the cubic root on both sides. So 1 plus r equals 1.03022 minus 1 on both sides. So r is 0 0.03022. Well, this is in decimal form, and we want our answer in terms of percentage. So I'm just going to multiply it by 100, so it would be 3.02%. Okay, good. <coughs> so Carlos buys a motor scooter at $1,200. Each year, the value of a scooter decreases by 10% of its value at the beginning of that year. Find the value of a scooter after three years. So this is also compound interest, but it is a um, it's compound loss or or um, decreasing in value. So P equals P zero one minus R to the power T. Um, P equals and I have my initial principal amount was one thousand two hundred one minus zero point one and after three years, I just use my calculator, plug that in, and we get 8, 7, 4, and 80. And this is still dollars. Okay, good. So we're done with question two. Let's move on to question three. Okay, question three is a beautiful graph that we've got to full, uh, complete. First of all, we have a table here. Let's say complete the table of values for fx. And here they have... Um, uh, well, our curve is 8 over x squared plus x over 2, where x cannot be 0. This is important, so we will have some space here where x is 0. That will never, uh, the, uh, the curve will never, never, ever pass through the y-axis. The y-axis is where x is 0. So now I'm going to substitute this negative 2 into this expression to find the value of y. So when we do the, this um, type of substitution, it is important to write that a value that we need to substitute in parentheses so that we don't accidentally um, uh, the, the, uh, don't square the sign, well, don't accidentally omit to square the sign. Okay, so I've plugged that value into my calculator. So I negative 2... Let me just quickly check. I don't want to say something up. Ah, it is 1. Um, where it was 2, the value is 3. Where it is 4, the value is 2.5. Please verify it for yourself and plug it into the equation there. Okay. Now we have to plot this on our grid. Okay. So on the grid, draw the graph. For the interval between x is negative 5 and 1, negative 1 1.5. So we're going to stop there at 1, negative 1 1.5. And from 1.5 to 5. Okay, so we'll have two asymptotes there. At 1, negative 1.5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3. So there. We will actually have an asymptote. We won't cross this line at all. Our graph would not cross it. And 1.5. There. 
a graph would not pass through this at all. There we go. Okay, so I'm just drawing a light line there, passing through those values. Now I need to quickly plot it. Um, so we have negative 5 here, and it is negative 2.2. So 2, 1, 2. Just draw the little line. Okay, draw a little cross there. Then negative 4 and negative 1.5. Um, negative 3 and 0 0.6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, I'm just plotting it, um, negative 2, it gives me negative 1, and negative 1.5 is, oh, sorry, sorry, it's not negative 1, it's just positive 1, that's nearly an error, okay, let me erase that. Okay, so negative 2 would give me 1. And negative 1.5 is 2.8. So 2.8. Okay, now let's move to the, the positive axis. And negative oh, 1.5 would give me 4.3. It would be way up there. Let me just move it down a little bit. 4. One, two, three, and it's there. Um, two would give me three. Three would give me two point four. One, two, three, four. Um, four would give me two point five. Just one up. And five would give me two point eight. And good, so let's draw the curve. So important, just one straight, one curved line. Don't lift up your pen at all. And just that is sufficient. Let's do the same thing here for this curve. I'm going to start here at the bottom and then just draw the curve to that point. And I'm not interested in um, anything beyond those points. That's what I want to stop at. And we have just earned ourselves five marks. Okay, good. Now they ask us, solve fx equals zero. Where will this graph cut through the axis? And we can see that here on our graph. Where would y be zero? y is zero at this point, and that would be 2.246. 2.65, I, I get negative 2.65, and that would be my answer. Negative 2.65. Um, well, the, the marking scheme says anything... Um, out there would be sufficient so i'm happy with that good question d by drawing a suitable line on the grid solve the equation where fx is equal to a straight line um one minus x okay so my graph fx that i've drawn there this is my graph fx and i need to draw the line y equals um negative x plus one um, so that I know, know it is a straight line passing through those two points at 1 and 1 because it's a negative gradient. So there you go. That's my graph. And the solution would be where the two lines intersect. So I get... Um, well, let's quickly just go down there. So negative 1.5 about just 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 a little bit shorter hey um ne negative sorry 0 0.9 negative 0 0.9 okay good so we happy there let me fill it in negative 0 0.9 and that's sufficient. Now they ask us by drawing a tangent at the point for negative 3 and negative 0 0.6, estimate the gradient 
of my curve when x equals negative 3. So I need to draw a gradient um, or a tangent line at the point negative 3, negative 3, negative uh, 0.6. And this is the point there, what I'm talking about, that little point there. So I need a tangent line that passes through those two points of that point. A tangent line, little spacing must be equal on both sides. So if I look at that, is the spacing about equal? Yeah. So that is my tangent line. <coughs> Just going to write here tangent. Okay. So I need to now for to find an estimated gradient, I need to find two points from this line. I can use this point that should be one point um, let me write the point down here that is negative 3 and negative 0 0.6 let's go to do it on this page so see um, uh, negative 3 and negative 0 0.6 that would be my one point and i need to to read another point from this graph uh, that would be 2 and negative 2 and 1 okay so negative 2 and 1 let's quickly work out what this estimated gradient would be we know that to find an estimated gradient we would say m equals delta y over delta x that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That would give me um, 1 minus minus 0 0.6. Okay. Over um, 1 negative 2 minus minus 3. And okay, let's use our calculators and quickly find that answer. Okay, 1 plus 0 0.6. Because a negative times a negative is a positive. Negative 2 plus 3 would give me 8 over 5 on my calculator. 8 over 5. That would give me a gradient of 1.6 approximately. And we are fine with that gradient. Okay, so 1.6. This is a little, a tiny little bit more than... than um, and the marking scheme but according to my graph on that that's fine and i'm happy with that answer okay and just switch off my calculator quickly good so that would give give us completed question three let's move on to question four okay question four says the table shows the time of t minutes are for, taken by 200 students to complete an IGCC paper. And then there is a 40 to 60 minutes, 60 to 70, 17 to 75, and 75 to 90 minutes. And then they give the approximate number of students, okay, the frequency of the students. By using the mid interval values, calculate an estimate uh, of uh, the estimate of a mean time. Okay, so this is X bar. And they actually gave you a little tip by the mid interval. So we need to find this middle interval. So that would give us 50 minutes. That would give us 65, 72.5. And let me quickly just do that. 82.5. Okay. So X bar is the sum of. Fi xi over the sum of Fi. Okay, so this is now my um, xi and my frequency would be the Fi. So I need to multiply these two together and divide it all by the sum of my frequency and we know that would be 200. So it's 50 times 10 plus 50 times 65 plus 80 times 72.5 plus 60 times 82.5 and it all have to be over 200 
okay we can plug that into our calculator and we get 72.5 and that would be our answer there by using the mid class interval mid, mid interval values so 72.5 would be our mid interval value or our estimated mean okay on the grid draw the histogram of um to show the information in the table and there we have a frequency density graph and what do we know about frequency density okay i'm just going to write it down here frequency density equals frequency divided by my class width okay so frequency my first class my first frequency was 10 over my class width that was um was uh 10 it's, uh, no not 10 it's 20 sorry and that would give me a half okay then the next one we have uh 50 okay maybe i should just go onto this little sheet little piece of paper here at the bottom Okay, um, 50 over 10, that would give me 5 as a frequency density, but is 80 over 5, that would give me 16, and 60 over 15 as a class interval, and that would give me 4. Okay, so now I need to complete this graph here, or this, this grid, um, 40 to 60, that's the first one. And we have five so four okay and that's you so good uh, it will make it a little life a little bit easier and make our work a little neater okay okay there you go just quickly shade it good the next one is from 60 to 70 60 to 70 and it is five. Oh, i've made a mistake here that first one isn't five high it is a half high that is really really very much an error okay good let's quickly verify let's quickly fix it up thank goodness that i saw that okay um so a half one is over here well one is a half of that so a half of that there we go it's a tiny tiny amount okay not the majority of students just a tiny little bit of students 60 to 70 minutes now we have a five Okay, there you go. Good, and then um, 70 to 75 students. We have it all up the way to, 50, uh, to 16. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we have it all the way up to 16. Draw it straight. So a group of students, quite a, a biggish group, okay. Then um, from 75 to uh, 75 to 90 minutes, we have a group of, and the frequency density is 4. Let's just move this draw this vertical line first before I draw the, the horizontal line okay so on my frequency density graph it should look something like that and um, I think the majority of students take longer to complete it if I look at that um, for uh, just a tiny amount of students you um, that does a paper and between 40 and 60 minutes 
more of them use uh, a longer time to complete the paper okay good that would give us question four let's move on to question five okay here is um a probability question okay so we have some cards where one of these seven cards are chosen at random write the probability down that the card shows for letter a so a is one two three four possibilities of seven out of seven okay shows the letter a or b so one two three four five six so it's six possibilities out of seven does not show the letter b okay so it could be one two three four five possibilities okay good Two of the cards are chosen at random without replacement. Um, find the probability that both cards show the letter A. Good, so now we have to quickly draw it. A, B, C. Then A, B, C. And A, B, C. And for C, A, and B, because there's only one card, um, only one card there for C, so it doesn't make sense to to have uh, another C. Okay, so A is um, four out of seven, two out of seven, one out of seven. That one there is three out of six, two out of six, one out of six. That give us four out of six, uh, one out of six, um, one out of six, and this would give us a four out of six. B would give us two out of six. Okay, that both show, but both show the letter A. So it's just A and A. So the probability of getting an A and an A is. 4 out of 7 times 3 out of 6, that would give us 42, 12 over 42. And we are done there. Okay, the two letters are different. So we don't want AA and we don't want BB, but we want everything else. Okay, and we can't have CC because CC um, is uh, not something that we that we can have because only there's only one c so it would be one minus the probability okay of getting an a and an a plus the probability of getting a b and a b all the others would be part of a solution set so one minus and we know that is 12 out of 42 plus b and b would be 2 out of 7 times 1 out of 6 and we can do the calculation 1 minus um, 14 out of 42 that would give us 28 out of 42 as a probability let's jot it down there so 28 over 42 we said that one was 12 over 42 good now the next one is three of the cards are chosen at random without replacement. Find the probability that the cards do not show the letter C. So it does not show the letter C. So in our, in our, on our um, graph there, on our tree diagram, I'm just going to go again and think there's another one. So it would be A and B. We don't want C. And then that's A and B, we don't want C, A and B, there's no, there's not more than one B, so it can just be A, we don't want C, we don't want C. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, do I have more options, A, A, B, C, we don't want C, A and B, A. Think that is what we want okay um, <clears throat> so let's write down the probabilities that we want okay so that would be um, 
4 out of 7 times 3 out of 6 times 2 out of 5 plus 4 out of 7 times 3 out of 6 times 2 out of 5 plus 4 out of 7 times 2 out of 6 times 3 out of 5 plus 4 out of 7 times 2 out of 6 times 1 over 5 plus 2 out of 7 plus um, times 4 out of 6 times 3 out of 5 just have to keep track here of all of this um, plus 2 out of 7 times 4 out of 6 times 1 over 5 and another one plus 2 out of 7 times 1 out of 6 times 4 out of 5 and if I do that whole problem do the calculation I would get 120 over 210 okay, let me just double check myself here I have AAA AAB a B A A B B B A A B A B B A B A B Okay and that would give me the total. Okay, so I'm happy. Good, so next question. Okay, question six. Well this one required a little bit more thought. Um, initially when I looked at it I thought how am I going to solve this and then you just have to think a little bit about it this is in the hexagon A B C D E F D E F A B is parallel to E D and E D and A F is parallel to C D so these two are parallel to one another and then we have a 90 degree angle here a 120 degree angle over there at E and at the 140 degree angle and we are asked to find e f a e f this angle there a good <coughs> so um i know that the interior angles of a triangle will add up to 180 degrees okay so if i select to that okay I would eliminate some of these angles okay and I also have um, a two two angles there that will be co-interior or no uh, yeah co-interior angles and these two would add up to 180 degrees so that will eliminate those two angles and that would give me the the possibility of finding f okay so i know the sum of the interior angles of a five-sided figure would be 180 n minus 2 that would give us 180 times 3 because it's five and no, no, five sides and that would give us 540 degrees okay good so now we know that it would be to get this 540 it would be 120 plus the 140 plus the 180 for this one plus f would give me 540 degrees and now we just need to do solve for f or angle e f a and i when i do that i get 100 so that angle F is 100 degrees. Okay, good. So here we have for question B, we have a cyclic quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, and they give us some angles. A, B, C is 100 degrees, and um, B, D, C is 50 degrees, and they intersect, the diagonals intersect at C. So it's the diagonals of a cyclic quadrilateral intersect at X, sorry. Um, calculate angle A, C, B. A, C, B. We want to find this angle. Okay. 
I know that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral will add up to 100 degrees. I also know that an angle subtended by the same arc would give me the same angle. So I'm just going to get my red here. Good. And this is an arc. It subtends this angle over there, this angle that I want, and it subtends this angle over here. So if I find this one, I in essence have my answer, okay? So opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees. So we have um, that angle, say, D1, plus 30 plus 100 must be 180 degrees and therefore d1 would be 50 degrees and because we have as it subtended by the same arc this angle at adb of a c b must also be 50 degrees so my answer is 50 degrees okay now the next question is BXC equals 89. BXC is 89. Um, calculate angle CAD. CAD. We want that little one. Okay. Um, I know that that is, um, well, uh, we've got to find that angle over there. Let me quickly just follow my train of thought here. Um, this one is, sorry, which one? C-A-D. C-A-D. I've got it wrong here. I've got to read carefully. It's that one that I want, not that. Okay. So this little angle over there. Okay. I know that opposite angles of a, um, it would be equal to one another. So that one would also be 89. I have that one as 50 degrees. So the interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So 50 plus 89 plus my angle, let's call it A1, um, would be 180 degrees. And I can solve there A1 must be 41 degrees. Okay. Good, so complete the statement. Triangles AXD and triangle BXC are, okay, now we don't, we only know about the angle 50-50. We know that these two will add up to 100. That one, or this one and that one would be equal to one another because um, if these two are equal to one another and we subtract 280, it would be equal. And therefore, the, angle, the triangles are similar. They are not congruent, so I have nothing. I know nothing about the length of the sides. I only know that the angles are equal to one another. So I can complete this statement and saying that they are similar. Good. Let's move on to the next question. Um, question C. We also have a try a circle with with a shape inside it, and they ask us. Um, PS, or they gave us some information, PS is 11, and QR is 10, and the area of um, QRY, QRY is 23 centimeters squared, and they ask us what is the area of PYS, PYS, we want to find this area over there, okay, so this is a ratio question, it is for the length over the length equals the area, and we can call that x, over the area, 23 centimeters, but this is centimeters, and this is centimeters squared. So to make this um, statement equal, we draw um, a square root. Now we can just solve. So I can have square root x equals square root 23, um, 11 over 10. And then square both sides. That would give me x equals, and I can just use my calculator to find that value, 27.83. 27.83, and that's correct. Okay, so I'm happy with that. 
Now they ask us a regular polygon has n sides. Each interior angle is n over 10. So we know that for any regular polygon to find the exterior side, we will take 360 degrees and we would divide it by n. So this relies, this question relies on that knowledge that you have. So we're going to set these two equal to one another because that's what it says. It's equal. So n over 10 would be equal to 360 over n squared. Oh, n. Okay. n times n would give me n squared. And that would give me 360. Oh, 3,600. Take the square root on both sides. So I get 60. And that would be the answer. Okay. Good. So the size of the interior angle of this polygon. So <laughs> we know the interior angle of a polygon is 180 n minus 2 over n. So all we need to do is just substitute that answer of ours into this space. So 180 60 minus 2 over 60. And I use my calculator and I get 174 degrees. <coughs> Good. Yeah. Good. So that concludes question 6. Let's move on to question 7. Okay. The total surface area of a cone is given by the for this formula. Um, find A when R equals um, 6.2 and T equals 10.8. All we need to do is just substitute those values into the formula. A equals pi 6.2 L is 10.8 plus pi 6.2 squared and now I just um, use my calculator to, to find the value 33.1 uh, oh sorry that's wrong uh, 331.112 and that would give me 331 as a final answer okay then the next question is rearrange the formula to make l the subject okay so we want l all by itself start off with your um, equation okay i'm going to move these terms over so a minus pi r squared equals pi r l then divide by pi r on both sides so L can be on its by itself. A minus pi r squared over pi r. And that is my answer. Okay, and I'm not going to jot it in there. However, you need to do that. Okay. Irina walks 10 kilometers. Question B. Irina walks 10 kilometers at 4 kilometers per hour. And then a further 8 kilometers at 5 kilometers per hour. Calculated Irina's average speed for the whole journey. Okay, so let's quickly draw a picture. That's her first distance. Then she drew walked another uh, distance. Okay, so this first distance equals 10. That distance equals 5. Her speed is there is um, 4 kilometers per hour. The speed there is 8 kilometers per hour. I'm sorry. A further 8 kilometers at... F uh, I made an error here. So this is distance is 8. And that would be 5. Okay, it does make a huge difference. <laughs> okay, so I've got to find time there. Time in that form, distance, speed times time equals distance. So time would be... Quickly check there for my myself. Just check myself. It would be ten over four, and time there would be eight over five. Distance divided by speed. Good. So my average, the average speed equals the total distance over my total time. Good, so we can fill that in. My total distance is 10 plus 8. And my total time, time is 10 over 4 plus 8 over 5. 
I can <laughs> plug that into my calculator and I get a um, average speed of 4.39 kilometers per hour. 4.39 kilometers per hour. Good, so um, the next question. Dariella walks X kilometers. So distance is X. And then she runs X plus 4. So the distance there is X plus 4. She walks at 5, so her speed equals 5 kilometers per hour. And there she walks, a speed is 10 kilometers per hour. She says there her average speed for this journey is 7 kilometers per hour. So let's work it out. And find the value of x, okay? So we want to find how far did she go with that average speed. So average speed of 7 equals total distance and our distance is x plus x plus 4 over and here we have um, our speed um, we still have to find time because it, we need total time okay so maybe just go back there and find what is time in relationship there I'm going to just jot it in there with a pencil time equals <coughs> x over 5 and my time there would be x plus 4 over 10. Now we can use those values there. So it's x over 5 plus x plus 4 over 10. Find a common denominator and we will have 7 equals 2x plus 4 over um, uh, 3x and just quickly check 3x plus 4 3x plus 4 over 10 okay um, let's let's simplify this I'm going to multiply on both sides of it I'm running into a little bit of a, a problem here with writing so big so it would be 7 and there I have 3x plus 4 over 10 equals 2x plus 4 and now I need to solve there and I can solve um, just uh, distribute there <coughs> actually I need to multiply this side by 10 that would make it so much easier so I have 21x plus 28 equals multiply this side by 10 20x plus uh, 40 okay uh, subtract all the x's or move all the x's to the one side that would give me x equals and 28 or uh, 40 minus 28 would give us 12 and that is our final answer a bit of tricky algebra here okay a bit of tricky algebra for this last couple of marks five marks good question c so we're still on question good check here question 7c Okay, Prahenta sells her model car for $18.80 and a profit of 20%. Calculate the original price for her model car. We don't know what is the original. If she does sell it as a profit of 20%, she did pay 100% for her model car initially and she now sells it for $19.80. Okay, so a percentage of our number equals another number, and we have 120% of x, but we don't know is 1980. x would be um, divided by 1980 by 120%, that would give us $16.50. So $16.50. $50. Okay, now Dev sells his model car for X dollars at the profit of Y percent. Okay, find an expression in terms of X and Y for the original price of his model car. Okay, so I have to I have to think about this as a little bit a little bit differently. So my original value um, we can say just was A. We just make up a number. Then the selling price uh, 
is x dollars then the profit at y percent would be y over a hundred okay because I need to reduce it to um, uh, to decimal form okay now um, these two are equivalent statements so the selling price is the purchase price okay plus the profit good so our selling price is x our purchase price is or the original value is a dollars plus my profit my profit is a times the um the actual bit of profit because it's not uh, from where do i find this this is a times this bit of profit y percent profit okay and now we just need to simplify here um actually just solve there for um dev cells for a we've got to sol solve for a uh, maybe look at this find um yeah let's rewrite it okay a plus a y over a hundred okay um multiply this whole thing well, let's just factor out an a let's factor out an a x equals a one plus y over a hundred and then divide by this this um this uh, uh this term over here this whole term so a would be x over one plus y over a hundred and what did i do wrong here oh I didn't simplify so nicely okay i could have multiplied by a hundred here and that would give me okay we can do that a hundred x over a hundred plus y okay both those statements are equivalent to one another okay good so that concludes that question and we can move on to question eight okay this a cylinder a cylindrical tank contains a 180,000 centimeters cubed of water the radius of a tank is 45 centimeters calculate the height of the water in the tank um, okay so we know the volume of a tank is the area of a base and that is pi radius squared times the height and it's pi we know what is 40 it, the radius is 45 and we want to find what is h but we do know that um, the volume is 180,000 okay now all we need to do is solve for h okay sorry i moved the page over h is then 180,000 divided by pi 45 squared and we can solve there use your calculator 28.3 okay and this the height of this tank is 28.3 centimeters ahead so the question b we are given a trough and it shows an empty tank in a shape of our uh, horizontal prism with a height of of a length of 150 centimeters the cross section of a prism is an isosceles trapezium this is very important a trapezium um, a b is 50 centimeters c d is 70 centimeters and the vertical height of a trapezium is 40 centimeters calculate the volume of a tank so we know the volume of a tank is the area of the base times the height so the area of my base is this area and i know how to find the area of a trapezium it's a half h base one plus base two times my height my 150 okay so it's a half of 40 times base one is 50 base two is 70 times 150 i can use my calculator calculate uh, just plug it in and if i do that i get in centimeters cubed 360,000 okay then they ask us 
write your answer in B1 in terms of liters. So I know that one centimeter cubed equals one milliliter. So I would have 360,000 milliliters. Then I also know that a thousand milliliters equals one liter. So I can just divide by a thousand here. That would give me 360 liters. Good. Then the next bit is um, 180,000 um, centimeters cubed of water flows from the tank in um, in part A into the tank of part in part B at a rate of 15 centimeters cubed per second. Calculate the time it takes. So it is the volume divided by the rate that it takes would give us the time. 180,000 centimeters cubed divide by 15 centimeters cubed per second and we can reason it out because centimeters cubed and centimeters cubed will cancel out i will be left with seconds and that would give me quite a number r oh, wait give your answer in hours and minutes okay so what is the time there okay but how many seconds a 12,000 seconds, but that's not an hours and minutes, so I want to show you quickly. So if I take my calculator and let me just put it on, that would be zero hours, zero minutes, and 12, 1, 2, 3, thousand seconds would give me the answer of three hours, 20 minutes. Three hours. 20 minutes and that was close to nothing to do to actually convert that okay good so let's continue here we are given a tank the, the cross section of this tank um, the 180,000 centimeters cubed of water reaches the level at EF so this is all water and EF is X centimeters long and this one is 50 centimeters long using the properties of similar triangles show that the height here this height is 2 bracket x minus 50 so we're going to look at two triangles let's just switch off my calculator again we have uh, two similar triangles that i'm going to use this one over here let me just draw it nice and perpendicular and that one over there and we know we can do that because we started off by the, with a statement that these two triangle of uh, this um, uh, is a isosceles trapezium so it's exactly exact exactly in the middle okay so what do I know this is 70 that is 50 so there's a difference of 20 so this this triangle this base must be 10 but we do not know about this base we we can actually work it out what would that little base be um do you agree with me that it would be x um this it would be x minus 50 and a half of it because we're only looking at one of the sides so it's a half of x minus 50 that would be the base because we look at what we did to find this one we said 70 minus 20 the bigger one minus the smaller one and we divide it by 2 to find the 10 so this one is x minus 50 and we divide it by 2 okay now we have a ratio and we know how to first do to actually solve the ratios okay so let's go for it um, it is h what we want over 40 okay so this height sorry this height uh, let me move it down a little bit more okay this height here over the 40 equals the base this base a half x minus 50 over my 10 i can multiply on both sides by 40 so h equals a half x minus 50 over 10 times 40 okay a half times 40 
divide by 10 would give me 2 x minus 50 and that's exactly what they wanted okay so i'm really really happy with this okay using h uh, uh, the height is 2 x minus 50 so that the shaded area is this so we know but what is the area of a of um a trapezium it's a um let me just quickly change my paper there around um we know that what is the area of a trapezium it is a half base one plus base two times the height okay so a half stays what is my base one my base one is 50 oh yeah plus the x and my height we found there was 2x minus 50 okay and a half times 2 i can just move it up sorry guys a half times 2 would give me 1 and we are left with 50 plus x and um, we can change this around let's do that okay so x plus 50 and x minus 50 and if i uh, start to um, distribute here i will get x squared minus 2500 this is for difference of two squares so my middle term will fall away okay and then they ask us find the value of x for part three and we know that we have um this x squared minus 2500 um that is x times the height times the height and my height is 150,000 oh sorry just not 150,000 just 150 okay just not get your macar here um equals 180,000 okay because we know what is the volume so we have an expression here about the area and um, times for times for distance or the height would give us the volume and now we can find the, the value of x so here we know, use the, the information that we're given way at the beginning of our problem and we can solve there just divide by 150 on both sides so x squared minus 2500 equals 12 1200 and we can solve for x equals 60.827 and let's simplify it to 60.8 okay good now find the value of h okay what is h we know what is h h equals 2 x minus 50 i now have x so h equals 2 60.827 minus 50 and then if i use my calculator i get 21.65 and that is sufficient for us in class okay good the next question we're nearly done guys um you're doing really well it's question nine um, work out what is PQ this is a matrix question uh, you need to do some matrix multiplication here so P2314 times Q that is 1203 that would give us the row times the column so 2 times 1 plus 3 times 0 2 times 2 um, plus 3 times 3 and 1 times 1 plus 4 times 0 and 1 times 2 plus 4 times 3 and we can do the calculations that would give us 2 that would give us 1 that would give us um, let me quickly do that 13 and 12 plus 2 is 14 <coughs> <coughs> my apologies for the cough Okay, the next question is Q. We need to find the inverse of it. So Q inverse is um, 1 over AD minus BC. And that would give us DA minus B minus C. 
So 1 over A, Q, A is 1, D is 3, minus 2 times 0. And we need to swap those around, so 3 and 1. Write a negative there, and we are done. So <coughs> um, a third minus, uh, well, 3 minus 0 would give us just a third. And the rest of the matrix stay as it is. Okay. Good. Now they ask us the next question. This is a, a little interesting one. Okay. And, and we need to do a bit of calculations to, fight, to work for that three marks. So PR equals RP. Okay. So this is interesting because it doesn't always work with matrices. But in this case, it does. Um, most cases in matrices, if you multiply the first one with a, with a second matrix and reverse it with second one with the first one, the two matrices are not equal to one another. But this is an interesting case. And we have 0, U, 1, and V. And that would be 0, U, 1, and V multiplied with 2, 3, 1, 4. Okay? So we need the row times the column so 2 times 0 would give us 0 3 times 1 would just give us 3 the row times the column so that would give us 2 times u, um, u so that's 2u and 3 times v plus 3v okay the row times the column 1 times 0 is 0 and that's 4 times 1 is 4 the row times the column, so u plus 4v equals, okay, the row, okay, the row times the column, that would just give us u, um, the row times the column, that would give us 4u, okay, the row times the column, so 2 plus v, the row times the column, so 3 plus 4v. Okay, now we need to solve for u and v, so we can do, choose any one. This entry is going to be equal to that entry. This entry will be equal to that entry. Likewise for those two, I'm going to select the easier ones to solve. So 3 and equals u. And this one, 4 equals 2 plus v. 4 equals 2 plus V. I can subtract 2 on both sides. So V must be equal to 2. Okay. So the determinant of S equals 0. So what is the matrix X? Uh, S, I'm just going to write it here for you. S is W382. And we are asked to find what is the value of W. So the determinant is AD minus BC. And they say it is equal to 0. So A is W, D is 2, minus B, that is 3, and that's 8, equals 0. So 2W equals 20. Uh, well, 2W minus 24 equals 0. So 2W is equal to 24. So W must be equal to 12. Okay. So it just went a little bit fast there. Okay, question 10. And uh, we have still question 11 to solve as well. Okay, question 10. Let me just take a sip of my tea because I've been talking the whole time. Okay, that was good. Okay, fx um, equals 2x minus 1. And this we know we have to find ff3. So it is, um, I'm first going to write it as fx. And so if f x, so it would be 2, wherever there's an x, I'm going to substitute that whole function into that space. Then I know that must be 3, so 2, 2 times 3 is 6 minus 1, minus 1. That would give us 9 as an answer. Okay, good. So the next question is g f x. So g is my base function. And wherever there's an x, I'm going to substitute f into that. So it would look something like that. And where there's an x, I'm going to substitute that whole function into that space. Good. Now we need to simplify that. So this is g 
fx. I need to distribute there. 2x times 2x would give me 4x squared. So negative 2x plus negative 2x would be negative 4x plus 1 um, plus 2x minus 1. That would give me 4x squared negative 2x as an answer. Okay. And now we look at the inverse of a function, f inverse of x. So I need to find what is f. Mm. Okay, so y equals 2x minus 1. I need to solve for x, a two-step plan. So y plus 1 equals 2x. x equals y plus 1 over 2. Now swap x and y around. And it would be y inverse equals x plus 1 over 2. And that is my answer. x plus 1 over 2. Okay, the next question is hx and then hx plus 2. So what is hx? Equals 2 over x. So it would be 2 over x plus 2 over x plus 2. That's what they want. Okay. And we need to write this as a single fraction. So it would be a common denominator. And that one will need to be multiplied with that. Plus 2x. Let's quickly solve there. My denominator stays as it is. I'm not going to distribute it. The numerator, however, we can, because that would be 2x plus 2x would give us 4x, and 2 plus 2 would give us 4, and we are done. Okay, good. So the last question, guys, you're really doing a very nice job. Um, nearly done. Just uh, a few more, a few more seconds. <coughs> And quickly get that paper where I've worked it out. Okay. Good. Let me just quickly find it. Oh, there it is. Okay, just to save time, I've done the questions pre um, before the time so that we don't waste valuable time on on, um, on the internet. Okay, so let's have a look here. A, 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, 6. So term would be 5 over 7. We can see that the nth term there, um, I probably need some paper there also to show you. That would be, okay. So my n, n term is n there, but what about this term there? So I have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So Tn equals A plus n minus 1 D. A is 3 plus n minus 1 D is 1. 3 um, plus 1 minus 1, that would give me uh, oh, n, n, n minus 1. That would give me n plus 2 as an answer. Okay, so that is part A. That's for sequence A and the denominator part of it. So I have n plus 2 over there. Okay, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 would be the next term. And then it's the same thing as what we have there for B because we have, or for A, the denominator of A is this term. So it would be n plus 2. Quite easy. Negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so let's have a look. That would be 3. <coughs> but let's work it out. <coughs> so negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so tn equals a plus n minus 1 d. a is negative 1 plus n minus 1 d is just 1. And it would be... Uh, negative 1 plus n minus 1 that would be, give us n minus 2 so tn equals n minus 2 n negative 2 good the next question negative 3 0 5 12 this is definitely not a arithmetic question um let me write it down <coughs> 
Okay, this is a quadratic question. I can just see the difference there would be 3, the difference there 5, this difference is 7, that's 2, that's 2, so 2a equals 2, 3a plus b equals 3, a plus b plus c equals negative 3, so 2a equals 2, a must be equal to 1, 3a plus b equals 3, 3, 1 plus b equals 3, b must be equal to 0, a plus b plus c equals negative 3, 1 plus 0 plus c equals negative 3, minus c must be equal to negative 4. Okay, and now tn equals a n squared plus b n plus c. That's my formula for the quadratic equation, and that's 1 n squared, b is 0, so plus 0 n, that just gives us 0, negative 4. And that is my answer for C. So n squared negative 4. And if I add another 9 terms to 12, I will get 21. Okay, good. Complete the table. We've done that. That was worth 8 marks. Okay, which term in sequence A would be equal to 36 over 37? So <coughs> um, it would be term 36 not i'm not right okay sorry guys i'm not right we would have to do a little bit more work not just dry it eye okay n over n plus 2 equals 36 over 37 now we need to cross multiply so 37 n equals 36 n plus um two times um sorry two times 36 2 times 36 is 72. Okay, I subtract 36 in, but subtract 36 in, in would be equal to 72. Okay, good. And the last question for this paper which term in the sequence D is equal to 742? So n squared minus 4 equals 725. Okay, so plus 4 plus 4, so n squared equals 7 to 9. Take the square root, square root of 7 to 9. That gives us term 27. And we are done with this paper. Well done, boys and girls. Good work. Keep it up. Complete this paper. Bring it back on Monday. And then I'll see you um, in class on Monday. Thank you. Mm.